three sling and what our sling theory is here. So the, the D3 sling that we've constructed is uh, the first time to have a, a single point to two point adjustable sling with a lightweight pad. Now this is a very, very streamlined, very, very lightweight system that's plug and play. You put it right on a weapon and go. Um, most weapons anyways. Uh, we run a single to two point design because of different mission requirements. So if I was in a vehicle, right there you can see how I can just take my sling, uh, especially for PSD missions or mobile operations. You can just take a rubber band, put it right around your weapon, and now you can fight with this weapon like this until you get to an opportunity to take your thumb and pull your sling out and get it on your body. Just like special operations, we've been doing that for many, many, many years. And it's a sling thing. So sling is the first thing if you don't remember anything else. You should practice sling manipulations because it's a part of weapons manipulation, not because it's a simple piece of, uh, piece of material like it's on a gun. It's the same thing as doing malfunction clearances, speed reloads, tactical reloads. It's the same exact thing because it's going to help you practically in any tactical environment you go into. Okay, so now I've got it in two-point mode right now. The best place to run two-point is to the rear end of the, the gun back here, which we call the rear end plate. A lot of people will opt to put it around the stock, which you certainly can do if you have a stock that plugs in place like that. The problem is I may not have as much mobility now with the sling. So if I needed to break it down, it's harder to break it down unless I slack my body and do that. So if I need to break down for entries on a door, if I do need to go muzzle up in that situation, or I need to muzzle strike somebody to get somebody out of the way, um, that would be a hindrance for us because it's not the most efficient method. Okay, and that's what we want to go for, it's the most efficient, which doesn't necessarily mean the fastest, but over time it will become very quick with that technique. <clears throat> now on our sling we have a fit buckle, so each individual operator will fit it to them, and then you will have a adjuster handle, and I'll talk about that here in a second. Now mine's set at a specific length for me, so as you can see I can hit the QD cups and come right in here to single point. Okay, so now I have a single point sling. Now, a lot of people don't like single point slings, so I'm going to get some of the, the misnomers out of the way because they say when they transition, the sling will hit them in the knees. Well, it shouldn't because, number one, my sling's going to be tighter than this, a little bit tighter. So it should transition to right here. The other thing is that I laugh when people say, well, if I have to transition in a gunfight, I don't want to have my knees getting banged up by my carbine. Well, I don't think you're going to care about bruised knees the next morning, okay, because you're in a gunfight. So let's, let's think about, you know, big boy rules here. Number two, people will say we transition over to the side to keep it out of the way. Well, as soon as you start running and stuff, it's going to come right back to center point anyways. So I want to, I try to get past the high school arguments there and say, look, single point is going to give you an opportunity in direct action, meaning you're in, in direct gunfight right now. You're not on a patrol mission. You are going in on PSD. You are in vehicle operations. Or you are doing some type of direct action hit on a building or a structure. Okay. What this gives you the ability to do is, number one, break the weapon system down so there's no sling in the way on the side of the gun. I've seen a lot of guys slapping mags and slings into their mag wells and they have to move it out of the way. A lot of people just discard that as, ah, no big deal, let's move it out of the way. But if I have to take a second to move a sling out of the way during a speed reload, what does that mean? I'm taking an extra second in a gunfight because I just ran out of ammo shooting another human being. So I don't want that happening there. The next thing for mobility, if you guys switch shoulders, which we do when we're doing more methodical clears, we never do that if we're dynamic or have a team of people behind us, but if I'm by myself, I'm on a corner, I'm definitely going to want to switch, and all I have to do here is pop the stock over to the other side. Now I get the same exact cheek weld and the same exact trigger control with the other hand. I never push a gun over to the opposite side like this because that is not the same trigger control biomechanically. Okay, you have tension built into your system now, and it's a lot harder. Um, so I would suggest keeping it the same as you would on the other side. So that gives you the ability to do that. Now, a lot of people will still say, well, I'm not going to switch shoulders. That's fine. But what happens when you take a round in the shoulder, which I have actually had a buddy happen, tore all his ligaments out. He was running two-point and could not get his weapon over to the other shoulder in order to engage. So he had to bail out, and then another team of support guys had to come in and help him and he realized he was shot after the fact. If he'd had a single point sling on, which he certainly does today, if his arm would have went down, he could have simply dropped the gun and picked it back up and at least still stayed in the fight. Um, same thing underneath a vehicle. So if I go down into a, an urban prone position, underneath the vehicle, if I did fall, maybe I got shot and it fell down or I'm shooting underneath something, 
and I see a curb in front of me, well, I just simply switch the gun and come up above the curb. Or if I'm the opposite way as a right-hander, and I'm underneath a car on PSD mission, because again, I either took this position of advantage or I got shot by hips or legs and I got a mobility kill, and I'm looking through the optic and I see a gas tank, oh shit, well, I don't want to shoot the my own car, but come back down underneath. And at that point, if I'm still mobile, I can get back up, I can move and switch back. So night vision, we do a lot of that as well. We're very slow, methodical movements around a corner. I come up quick, switch, pop, and then move. So it just gives you a better range of motion if you want that. It doesn't mean you have to do that. <clears throat> if I go into a patrol mode or a relax mode, I go to two point, okay? Or mission specific. I need to clear an act, I need to go up a ladder well. We do this a lot in ship boarding, boardings with BBSS missions. So if I'm on the boat, being single point, I'm coming up on the boat, I'm about to climb a ladder, I'll tell the guys I'm about to climb. At that point, I can do one of two things. I can either push the stock around and start climbing the ladder, use handgun. As soon as I get up over the top, I pull the carbine back around, handgun goes away, carbine's right there, okay? Or I could come outside, swim through the sling, and because I'm gonna put it on my back. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to just slip around my back and then go ahead and tighten it down. And now I've got it cinched up on my back, nice and tight. That's the only time I really ever touch the adjuster handle. When I'm going to come back to that original profile, slack, back to that point where I started, arm through, I'm back in two point mode. And then if I needed to, I can go back to your single point. Now, a lot of people will probably watch this and go, that's a lot of shit. That's right, because you're, you're a combat person. You're going into a very complex situation. So a lot of people try to simplify things. That was very simple as far as I'm concerned. That's really just the tip of the iceberg. So a lot of people will say, well, hey, don't, don't think about malfunctions too much. Just immediate action or remedial action. To me, that's the same concept. If I'm driving down the road and I hear wobble, 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 I know it's a flat tire, but I get out and I open the hood first. There's no point in doing that. So we want to be thinking, not just shooting. That's the whole point of thinking about a sling just a little bit differently. And it takes practice, right? So if I'm in two-point mode, I would start here, break down, go into single point, come back up, switch shoulders, switch shoulders, okay? Go back to two-point mode, just to give you a workout, slide it around, work on something, bring it back around, put it back in the single point mode. Go back into two-point mode again, sling out of it, you want to be as smooth and as efficient as possible. And that right there, that last 20 seconds is a simple drill and a workout that there's no excuse that any combat ready person shouldn't, shouldn't be practicing. They should be doing it, okay? So that's a simple nutshell on swing. Thank you, Travis. I know it's a little